It's been a while since the last time I watched a Jose. Obviously, I'm not the target demographic. But when the season started and going over the premises of a bunch of new anime, I found in Love of Kill a very interesting one. And I wasn't disappointed, at least on the beginning. An outspoken hitman stalking a Sundere bounty hunter, come on, it's hilarious. Even if the small studios are still working hard to earn a name for themselves, they were able to bring together two fabulous seiyus that are currently in high demand. Hiroshimono, who plays Connie in Attack of Taira and Zenitsu in Demon Slayer, with Saori Onishi, who played Ace and Eiridi in the past, and more importantly Michon of the highly anticipated Spring 2022 Shikimori is not just a cutie. The manga itself has very good ratings, and after watching the first few episodes, I was sold. Sadly, Love of Kill, after a very strong first half of the season, collapses due to messy storytelling, especially in the final stretch, where they take several episodes to tell a story that becomes predictable. It seemed that they were taking their time building to something really special, a great seasonal ending, but it was just a slow burner. So slow that the outcome is that predictable. And the payoff, well, was bare minimum. Just enough to say that this show is not that bad. Love of Kill tells the story of Ryan Hass' song, a cold-blooded hitman that fulfills even the toughest and more difficult of the jobs. He is quiet and reserved, especially regarding his past, as for most part of the season remains a mystery. He only shows affection for Chateau, a bounty hunter, who has a cold and distant personality, and wonders why the introvert killer gets so attached and cares for her. Chateau also has a messy background that forged her reserve and cold personality, so for her having someone so interested in her and getting close, it's a weird feeling. Even though the beginning of the season is great and kept me entertained, it was pretty clear to me that this was mostly a rinse and repeat situation. Chateau gets into a tough or tight situation and right hand comes and saves her, just to get slammed by the shy Sundere. Another problem is that they misuse long periods of time to develop the characters. So yes, we get to meet season without even knowing our character backgrounds, and more importantly, not even a hint on the obsession of Ryan Ha on Chateau. Well, that's not entirely true. We do get some hints on Ryan Ha's background that develops into a mini arc with a former acquaintance, but it's very misleading and adds little to the overall plot. By mid-season and after confronting several Hong Kong trial objectives and others, the main villain makes an appearance. At this point, things start to move forward. Finally, we start getting to know the side characters a bit better, Chateau's allies, Jim that for some reason doesn't have a mouth, and Ritzland, her boss. They both care deeper for her, and it seems that they know more about her background than herself, especially her boss. As I said before, from this point onwards, we get a slow pace arc, in which backgrounds are carefully explained, and we spend a few episodes exclusively witnessing the story that could have been told in just one. The story is interesting, but it could have been told better, and the payoff is just not great. It's good, barely, but after all that waiting for certain developments to happen, it just doesn't quite get there. Animation has its up and downs. There are beautiful takes of Europe's towns and cities that would make a Bond movie proud, but it also plays a lot with shades and shadows that hides its weaknesses. So animation is not pristine for action scenes, where lighting is smartly used, but if you pay close attention, you will notice that something's odd. The reason is, because there is. Regarding the OST, it's a question on quality over quantity. It has a few great mixes, but they use them over and over again. It seems that they only have two or three, because the rest of them are just not that good, and it seems they are aware of it. The OP is one of the best ones of this winter season, an upbeat song performed by Toshiki Masuda, who plays Porco in Attack on Titan. The beginning of it is classic Cowboy Bebo inspired mix that follows with an excellent jazz. This song alone earns an extra point on my rating. DD is not quite as good, but it's pretty good also and on classic anime style is more passive and melancholic than the OP is. Love of Kill targets a very specific audience that is growing in numbers, and in a time where the titles of the genre offer in prime time are lacking. Love of Kill misses the great opportunity to offer a dynamic story to keep audiences on the edge of their seats for 12 episodes. The story that starts really good ends on a disappointing note. 
other than having a great but short OST, Love Kill doesn't offer anything new to the genre. Nevertheless, the premise and the solid start of the show puts it a little bit above average on my rating, and for that it's a 6 out of 10. I do hope that this show gets a second season, it will help them to improve on the ending we got, because it had the potential to be better. So, are you a Jose consumer? Do you enjoy mature action romances? Or is it not your thing? Let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, thank you all so much for watching. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Join the Discord for free. The link is in the description section down below. And as always, I wish you all a wonderful day.